looking in severely good trim, if I may say yes, so. Yes, I'm feeling in good trim. Oh, um, yeah. I've had Nick. this beard sort of, but there's no re real reason for this beard, but um, I, I'd had it cut off a little bit today, so I was looking a little bit like the Dubliners. <laughs> and uh, I've lost it a bit now, but um, it's really just there for reasons of anonymity. Is it? Yeah, you know, just like travelling around on public transport, and uh, it's just nice just to be just able to move in and out, you know. Does it work? Well, it's funny, because people don't sort of see, you know, they see the beard and they don't realise it's you. I sometimes, you just reminded me, I do this trick sometimes, when, when people spot you, they don't realise that you can see them. You must have had this, where people are nudging each other, you know. And um, Christmas time is a good time to play this game, when you're in a department store, and usually it's the wife has recognised you, and she's nudging the husband, he's going, what? I go and stand right behind them, <laughs> pretending I'm looking at the bookshelves and she can't say anything. <laughs> and they have this almighty row while I'm just sort of like pretending I don't know what's going on. I, sometimes I do that when I've got nothing better to do. Of course. <laughs> I suppose that, that it must be wonderful actually sharing the bill with Tommy Cooper. That would have been a, a great ambition of yours. Yes, absolutely. And in fact, I remember very clearly the uh, night that he died because I was writing a show with another comedian at the time called Norman Lovett. And we were, we were working very hard and, and we knew that Tommy Cooper was on television that night. And so we sort of, this, this was our treat for the evening. And so we sort of worked, spent our whole day sort of, you know, writing and sort of stopping and thinking, oh, Tommy Cooper's on tonight. So we built up into this really big thing. And um, we saw it, and, and uh, he, I mean, he was doing really well. He was hysterically funny that night. And uh, he picked up this square, sort of black, sort of cube, and he said to the audience, he said, he says, look at that, he said, Irish bowling ball. <laughs> and it was a laugh like that, not a big laugh. And he put it down, he looked into the wings, he says, I thought it'd go better than that. <laughs> I did. And then he sort of stood in the middle, and then a girl came on and put a cloak on, and then it all went, a, it collapsed down, and the cameras went like this, and we didn't know what was going on. We thought, this is a very strange way to finish the act. And then Jimmy Tarbuck came on after the interval and he was sweating and working hard. And you think, well, something's going on here because he's really sort of, you know, covering for something here. And at the end, you know, the programme finished and then the guy at the end, of the, you know, came on the news bulletin. It was Trevor McDonald who said, and we've just heard that Tommy Cooper has sadly passed away. And we was, it really affected us badly because he was a great comic and we really sort of had been looking forward to him. So we said, well, look, there's no point in doing any more writing. So we said, well, let's, let's go to the pub. And so we went to the pub, had a couple of drinks and started thinking about and talking about the jokes that he did. And you remember that one where he was in the, he came into a railway carriage and you had Frank Thornton dressed as Adolf Hitler. And there was these other Nazi sort of stormtroopers around. And the idea was these actors had been sort of filming a, a, a film somewhere. The, the, the costume van had gone. They had to travel on public transport. So they're sitting there, right? And Frank Thornton's got this newspaper and he's dressed as Hitler. And Tommy Cooper walks into this set and he sits down and he sits opposite Frank Thornton. The paper comes down and he sees it's Hitler. And he looks at him and he leans forward and he says, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's such, a, it's such a great joke. It's a lovely surreal moment. It's a it? lovely surreal moment. You ought yeah. to be ashamed Shamed of yourself. Of all the things to say to Adolf Hitler. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you think he might have made a good panellist and have I got news for you? N no, I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think his humour would be completely misunderstanding what was going on. So I, I think he'd be sort of like completely, well, you know, looking around and sort of suddenly a, a flower would come out of here or something, or a water pistol or something. But he was, a, a, he was an anarchist, really, I suppose, wasn't he? That's right. Uh, well, wrong with that. I mean, that's what that show's about, too. That's about anarchy as mm -hmm. well. You've got a new series coming back very shortly. Yes, in a couple of weeks' time, yes. What are your feelings about Angus Deaton? Um, <laughs> well... <laughs> He never invited me to any of these parties, so... <laughs> I was sort of a bit upset by that, really. Um, well, it was all a bit difficult, wasn't it, you know? Um, How did you find out about it? I mean, did, did you know it was... What was no, that? I mean, there was no... We had no indication. I mean, I just thought he was quite a dull man, and I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> he had such stamina and such energy. Um, <laughs> We were, uh, we were staying in Cornwall, we were doing just a minute on the radio for BBC Radio 4 and uh, we recorded the show and uh, we were travelling around Cornwall, Cornwall on the Sunday and we got to this hotel and we checked in and this was about 8 o'clock in the evening I hadn't bought any papers or anything like that and Sarah was in the bath and uh, I just went, turned on teletext and there it was, Angus Dayton has been caught with a prostitute snorting cocaine and I, I thought, hang on a minute, I'm, I'm, I'll turn it off and put it on again <laughs> And I looked at it, and I went into Sarah in the bath, I said, you are never for ever going to forget the moment you were when you heard what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> and it, it was extraordinary, you know, we were in Cornwall for the weeks, so we thought we'd take advantage, you know, take advantage of being down there, and, and a lovely part of the country. And uh, I spoke to the production crew, production team during the uh, week, and they said, well, Ian's thinking of taking a copy of the News of the World on with him. 
And I said, well, I'm thinking of having it printed up as a T-shirt. <laughs> and they said, well, that sounds like a good idea. So we had it printed up as a T-shirt, so there was all that. So kind of we, we got through that next program yeah, next program, yeah. Um, because it was, uh, you know, you have, to make it very, you have to make it funny if you can. And my instinct is to make things funny and to be funny. So, and it was a hilarious show. People just came up to me afterwards, you know, and said that's one of the funniest things we've seen in years. And it was something momentous because the man that normally is sitting there sort of like, you know, looking a little bit superior, is suddenly on the front cover of the news of the world and all this kind of terrible stuff that he's getting into. So, so anyway, that was done and we got to the end of the series and that was fine. Um, we thought, well, maybe that's, that's a blip. We can get over that. We can keep going, you know, because it's a very popular show and people do love the show. And we don't want the show to stop. The, second se the next series starts up, the, the winter series last year, and then there's more of the stuff in the newspapers, and it just becomes, it becomes really difficult to, to do the show. I mean, uh, uh, the, the reason it was taken off, I mean, the, the, the press say because the BBC sacked him because of the, of the drug taking. I, I would imagine that that's not altogether the reason, was it? The reason was the, sh the show was impossible, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, you ca comedically, if the man, in, how, you can't, the person in the middle can't do jokes about Geoffrey Archer if people then say, yes, but what about you? And if you say that every time, like when Christine Hamilton comes on the show, and uh, the producer had this idea, he said to me, whenever we, Angus mentions Christine Hamilton's husband, he's going to say, the disgraced ex-Tory MP. So she got narked by this, and she said, well, if he's disgraced, what are you? And all he can do is shrug his shoulders and say, well, yes, I suppose I'm disgraced. Yes. And you think, well, comedically, what can we do now? We can't keep talking about it, because yes. it, it, it's not going to go away, and every guest that's going to come on is going to mention it, and then... You know, it, it's a nightmare. So the the BBC made a decision, which I have to say that you know we all supported because you we thought it was the right one. The show wouldn't have carried on. No, no. The show would have finished. Uh, I mean, again, the, the the media made much of the fact that it was that he was sacked, and the, the suggestion was that you and, and Ian had stabbed him in the back. Well, we stabbed him in the front. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I mean, anyone who saw the shows, you know, over the years, you know, he always used to have a go at him and stuff, and he used to take it in good part and stuff. But, you know, in the last recording, I was saying, well, perhaps you should just resign. I mean, it really was getting, t you know, when the producer says to me, he says, look, I've had a conversation with Angus, those are the jokes he can't do this week, and these are the jokes he can do. You know, you're, you know he can do other shows by all means, because yeah. you, can't, you can't keep talent like that down. No. But, um, but there's not, not, not a way back from on that show, no. in your view. No. Well, it, it's, it's compromised. It would compromise the show entirely. D did you like him? No. <laughs> but, you know, we didn't, we didn't live... <laughs> would you like to explain what you just said? <laughs> well, I don't know. I sometimes feel like the Marx Brothers. We lost Zeppo. It's not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> just get somebody who can read out loud, sit in the middle. It doesn't bother me who it is. <laughs> Would you like to do it? I'd love to do it. You should come great. on and do it. I think yeah. it'd be very good. Yeah. But in a sense, I mean, <laughs> we, well, we weren't friends particularly, but then you don't, you know, if you saw the show, I mean, people sometimes think that people in showbiz all live together in a lovely house, you know. <laughs> um, you know, Del Winton's doing the cooking and uh, <laughs> Judith Charms is upstairs clearing out the drains or whatever. But <laughs> it, we didn't really get on, but it, did, it worked for the show yes, because there was work. an animosity yeah. there. Yeah. That was OK. And, yeah. and professionally, that was that kind of... I mean, I get on with Ian a lot better than the than I did with Angus, really. Yes. I, I, I like Ian. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> am I making myself clear? You are. You are very. I mean, uh, you're, you're not so mealy mouth about it, that is for sure. And what's going to uh, give spice, too, to the BAFTAs, which are coming up on, <laughs> yes. on Sunday, and, and both you and Angus are uh, nominated yes. in the same category, aren't Well, you? if he wins, we know how he's going to celebrate, don't we? <laughs> 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 um, well, I don't know. Yes, we are. But I mean, I, it's the BAFTAs are a very strange award. Now, I've been nominated now um, seven times to have a good news for you. I've never, never won it particularly um, at all. Uh, and that's the last. <laughs> not that I'm bitter about it. No. But, but I think it's a bit annoying, really. If they're going to give it to me, give it to me. But don't just keep it humiliating me every year. <laughs> it would be odd if he won it this year. Well, would what say. would you do? Do you think? I don't know. I think possibly if I'm going to go, I think if he wins, I'll get up on stage before him, <laughs> grab the BAFTA and make a run for it. <laughs> and then I thought what I could do is perhaps I could sort of like a Jonathan Creek plot. I could make my own BAFTA at home, <laughs> steal the real one. Then when security get hold of me, I give them the fake BAFTA. <laughs> they think they've got it and I can walk out with the real one under my arm. <laughs> I don't know. It's, 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 it's nice to be sort of nominated and stuff, but after being nominated seven times and, and not, 
not, not getting one. It's, it's kind of, it's nice to be nominated. And it's, it's more important, really, to me, uh, that rather than the war like that, that people still love the show. And, you know, we had a, you know, it was very difficult when Angus left. It was, you know, it was really hard. And I came in and stood in as the chairman because I knew how the show worked. And it worked. And at the end of the programme, people said, well, I, I demonstrated what I needed to do. It was the biggest gig I've ever done, really, in television terms, is I needed to demonstrate that the show could still work with somebody else hosting it. And I, and I demonstrated that. And then other people, Anne Robinson came in and did a very good job. And Boris Johnson... Oh, he's was, wonderful, isn't he? Is, just, is he? is he of this planet? I don't know. Do I, you think? <laughs> I think he lives in a parallel universe somewhere, uh, Boris. Uh, he's my favourite on television. I love him on television. Yes, he's, he's absolutely wonderful. But he's, he's bonkers, isn't he? He's totally bonkers. Yeah. And oh. he, he gets surprised when the real world brushes up against <laughs> him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, OK, here you are. Uh, where am I? Am I in this? I'm over there. I should want you. Uh, who are you? You know, it's, 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 it's proof that P.G. Woodhouse drew from life. <laughs> <laughs> just, just reported on all his friends. By the way, our, our researcher, when she, she went to see you, said uh, that, uh, that you were belly aching about, about the show. Oh, <laughs> Uh, yes. No, no, don't no, no, pass it off with a gay. <laughs> no, that's, tell, tell that's a prelude. Just wait to hear what I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I've, you know, I was the first one when you did the show when you came back in '97. You were um, the first guest on. So that's um, due to public demand, you came back, and um, I thought, well, that's nice. I was on with Barry Manilow and uh, I think Anthony Hopkins. Anthony was. Hopkins. And you did Tommy Cooper. He did Tommy Cooper. He's, he a, he's a big Tommy Cooper fan. And you had the credit sequence at the beginning with all the names and the faces that have been on, and I'm not on there. Uh, yeah, it's a shame, isn't it? I'm glad that there was one person who fills the inner pain. <laughs> I mean, you've still got Orson Welles on there. I mean, he's not coming on again, is he? No, I mean, you can not. take him off. <laughs> Stick me on there. Well, we, we did think about it, actually. Yeah, right? clearly. No, I did. No, no, I did. No, no and, and we, we kept you away from the backstage there where you could see the credits that went out tonight, because we have put you on, Paul. Have you? Hey, on. All right, if you don't believe me, have a look here now. Doesn't look anything like me. <laughs> Where's my beard? Well, well Dame Edith Evans used to sort of say to me, because she was on the, in the original shows in the 70s, mm -hmm. we used to have her on. Uh, she used to say to me, I, I, I watched the show, she said, and I, I was on. She said, I'd like to see that I'm still alive. <laughs> and I said to her, what do you think of the show? I don't watch the show, she said, I go to bed. <laughs> she said, watch the opening credits. <laughs> Good, so uh, you've got the How I Get News for you starting in a couple of weeks' yeah, time. Yeah. And then you've got uh, Room 101. Room 101, yes, we'll do some more of those um, in July, so there's going to be another eight of those. And, and people and, seem to like that. And what else? So what about the, the writing career? The well, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I'm very lucky to be doing such shows as Have I Got News for You and Room 101 this three series of year. I mean, I, I, I'm desperately trying to write a screenplay at the moment because I directed a short film about two years ago, which I, I from uh, uh, the script that we'd written, and I just had such a great time doing it. The, the film was called The Suicidal Dog, and we had this great dog that used to run in and do things, but he'd never do the same things twice, because he was quite an intelligent dog. And after the second time, he go, well, really? I mean, didn't you get it? I mean, there's no point <laughs> in being here. So the dog would do something different, and then you'd say, no, hang on, that's, that's good. Let's, we can change that joke to make that bit work there. And I, I found it absolutely fascinating. Talking about, about the surreal moments, and you're quite right, because that's what we look forward to from you on, have I got mm. used to those wonderful flights of fancy. I remember one of fantasy, you took off talking about polar bears. And oh, yes. And this extraordinary fantasy. Well, what's been your favourite surreal moment where you've reacted spontaneously in something? I, I, you know, this is something I, I, I'm pleased that I can do it on Have a Good News View because it works quite well where I react to what other people are saying around me. And Angus turned to Glenda Jackson and he said, um, Did, what, was, what was your old school motto? And she wasn't paying attention at that particular moment. And she said, um, are you looking at me? And I said, that must have been a tough school. <laughs> And for a moment, she didn't twig what was going on. Because she was sort of listening to what Angus said. But it, it suddenly it came across the image. You can see it in Latin, a broken bottle, you know. Good. Well, good to see you again. And good to see you looking so, so fit and well. And uh, look forward to seeing you on, on Have I Got News For You and all the various other Well, you, you, perhaps you'll come on and host it then. Well, I, I, I think it's a very daunting job to do, It's actually. easy. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> So you say, so you say. That chemistry is so important. That threesome has got to, got yes. to work properly. But I mean, yes, I, I think I'd like to do it, actually. Yeah, give it a go. It's probably the worst career move I've ever made. <laughs> Paul Merton, thank you very much indeed. Paul Merton.